a new telescope that will use these advances in technology to allow us to get a better and clearer image of the universe. Um, I'm Hilary Bowden, and I'm working under Professor Andy Howell at Los Cumbres Observatory. Uh, so the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope definitely lives up to the large part of its name. A uh, larger telescope allows us to see further. You can see here that we have a um, model of what a telescope would look like of a person down here, as well as um, a picture of one of the mirrors of the telescope next to some people for scale. So you can see it is quite large. However, there are many large telescopes in the world, and that's not what makes this telescope special. What makes this telescope special is that it will be able to monitor changes in the sky in very faint objects. Um, the telescope is set to be completed in 2022, and it will begin a 10-year pre-programmed survey, which means they have to decide the observing strategy in advance, meaning where the telescope will look at a certain time in the night. Uh, the current proposed observing strategy can be represented by this map. Just like we can take a globe and project it onto a 2D surface, we can do the same thing with the map of the sky. So the telescope is in the southern, hem southern hemisphere, which is why the northern hemisphere up here is all gray, can't see the sky from the northern hemisphere. How, um, the main region of the telescope survey is this wide, fast, deep survey region, all of this blue. This is the region where the telescope will spend 90% of its time looking. And the areas that are different colored are areas that the telescope will visit more or less times. For example, these areas that are slightly darker blue right here, right here, um, these are called deep drilling fields, and they're places where the telescope will look more often than average. Uh, the observing strategy has a a uh, big impact on what we are able to observe. So different areas of research are um, more compatible with different observing strategies. So they want to be able to balance all of the different science goals that uh, people are trying to accomplish using this telescope by coming with an observing strategy that can meet all of these needs. I want to figure out um, what observing strategy is the best for observing supernovae? Um, by comparing different observing strategies and seeing if there are um, small changes that can be made that would greatly increase our ability to observe supernovae. Uh, supernovae are events that take place over a very short amount of time, and we measure their brightness over time. So the Large Topic Survey Telescope, with its ability to monitor changes in time, has the potential to observe a large number of supernovae. Um, so what is a supernova? We begin with a massive star, and much larger than our sun. And with this star, uh, it needs to burn fuel in its core in order to produce the energy to keep it from collapsing in on itself. However, towards the end of its life, it starts to run out of fuel, and it becomes unstable, and then can explode in a supernova. I have here a little video of what a, this is a simulation of what a supernova might look like. You can see here, it's still relatively stable, and then, go ahead and go. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you can see its uh, brightness is increasing over time after the explosion. So how do we observe supernova? The telescope will take um, images of the sky, and it'll take an image of a distant galaxy like this one. We can see the supernova down here in the corner right here. Um, this supernova is incredibly bright. It can uh, be as bright as all the rest of the stars in this galaxy combined. Um, we, if we have a series of images like this one, we can figure out what the brightness over time looks like and use that to create a light curve like this one here. Um, if you notice on the uh, y-axis we have magnitude. This is um, inversely proportional to brightness. So if, as we go up here, even though the magnitude numbers are getting smaller, this is increasing brightness going up the y-axis. If we look at the time after the initial explosion, we see that there is an increase in brightness until we get to the peak a little after 10 days. 
Um, then over the next several weeks, the uh, supernova will fade. This, so this is a relatively short event. We, the, from the light curve, we can figure out many of the physical properties of the supernova. It's, we're especially um, focused on what the magnitude of the peak is, as that contains a lot of information about physical properties of the supernova. Um, what I want to do is determine LSST's ability to observe supernova. What I do is I start with a template of a supernova, and we, what, what this is, is we have a good idea of what um, the brightness over time looks like for some types of supernova. And we can use um, this idea of what the brightness over time looks like to construct a model of what we think the supernova should look like. And then we take this template and we place it at a certain spot in the sky on a certain night during the survey. And we use a simulation created by LSST to simulate their observing strategy. And using this, we can see when the telescope would look at the bright spot in the sky to see this supernova. Then using the um, what the telescope would see, we can compare that to our template. Now, how do we use light curves to do this? We start with a um, template like the one I showed earlier, and then we run it through LSST simulation. And what we get back are these points here. If you see here, we have uh, the telescope sees it around day five, and then it will look away, look at some other spots in the sky for a while, and then look back around day 15, and so on. Now this is a relatively well sampled spot in the sky, meaning that the telescope observed the supernova many times. However, we found um, that for many spots in the sky and times during the survey, that um, we uh, had zero or only a few observations during the course of the supernova. Uh, our result was that in the main survey region for the current proposed observing strategy, only about 1% of supernova had at least four points in the first 30 days. For those 1% that we did uh, have consider having sufficient points, we fit a polynomial to those first 30 days. We don't care so much about this tail of the supernova because what we're focused on right now is figuring out where the peak happened. Uh, so using this, this is actually a quadratic, using this quadratic we can compare it to our, uh, our original light curve and by comparing where the peak what occurred on what day and what magnitude. So you see here we have a histogram comparing the actual peak versus the peak that we found with our polynomial. So actual, this is actual magnitude minus the guess magnitude, the magnitude from our polynomial. Ideally, this would be a very thin bell curve, and that is almost what this looks like. 